Hello friends and welcome to the next session. The title is five must knows for building intelligent chatbots in Microsoft Teams. And right now talking to you is Thomas Gölles. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP for office development from Solvion. And also in this session is my dear colleague, Stefan. Hi, Stefan. Hi. Hi, uh, my name Hi. is Stefan. I, I'm also a Microsoft MVP for artificial intelligence. I'm working at the same company as Tommy. Um, and we're happy to be here today. Yep. Um, you see all our details. You can reach us on the different social medias. Don't be afraid to ask some questions, but let's jump right into the topic, right? Yeah. Perfect. Um, the agenda for today is in, in five different steps, um, as the session is called five must knows, um, and our five must knows for intelligent bots in teams, uh, are is the use case definition, the personality, the overall architecture, the monitoring, and then we want to have a close look at the touch point in Microsoft Teams with a short demo. Um, let's just jump into the first topic, um, the use case. Um, I think most of you in the session or in the call are familiar with the work that Simon Sinek did with his great book, Start With Why, um, explaining uh, in his book why, for example, an Apple iPod is different from what was the Zoom player or an, any other MP3 player. Um, and for any IT project, not only for bots, um, we see most of the time arguments like on the left side here, um, where customers argue with, with sentences or arguments with, we need to be modern, we need to use AI. Uh, another company also has a chatbot, we also want one. Um, somehow uh, bots, AI, and also blockchain are the, the big buzzwords right at the moment. Um, and we are also confronted with the situation that um, companies out there using bots on Facebook and in different web pages. And also that makes our customers realize, okay, they also uh, need that technology or believe that they have the need for that technology. But as always, um, it's it's a, a regular thing for a, for a software project. Make sure that you know who is your target audience and what is the business problem you're going to solve with the bot. Um, don't just jump on the technology wagon because of the availability of conversation and AI as a service within Microsoft 365 and Azure. Make sure you have a valid use case and make sure that this use case is aligned with your overall digital workplace strategy on the one hand and also with the need and the real business scenario that you're going to solve with the problem. Otherwise, um, you fade out and maybe just be a, a small fire uh, and not a real, a real um, adoption phase followed by the project. Um, in terms of how uh, you can start really quickly um, would be the option to start with an Azure Q&A bot uh, that is uh, available with, without code. I think Stefan, we did a, a webinar on our YouTube channel where uh, listeners can can go to and, and watch the whole, I think, 15 minutes uh, yeah. to get started with a bot. Yeah. Um, and you see here in this uh, small uh, diagram, don't start uh, with, with too much uh, dialogue management or don't think at first sight about how you can talk to the bot. Start with the basics. Um, the the Q&A bot uh, allows you to start without a single line of code uh, to validate your use case, to validate also how users are going to interact with your bot if they take this new approach seriously and if, them, if it's helpful for them in their business scenario, and then start to think about more sophisticated stuff like uh, form flow dialogues and bespoken bots. Okay. Next, Stefan, personality. What's your take on yeah. that? Yeah, basically what you would need to do is not only create your bot and handle all the, let's say, business logic from within the dialogues and stuff like that, but you also want to actually create a new personality, whether if it's an internal chatbot you want to use and deploy for your uh, coworkers, or if you're building a chatbot for, let's say, your customers or your partners, um, the key aspect here is to really come up with a personality. Uh, and the personality actually uh, is like your brand. So you could see your bot as some kind of brand you introduce within the organization or to your customers. Um, and 
a brand usually has some key aspects. So it has a name. Uh, in most cases, you have, let's say, an icon or an avatar, and you also need to think about how this bot or, or this, this brand will introduce itself to whoever is going to use it. So, for instance, if you introduce a chatbot within your uh, modern workplace for your colleagues and coworkers, um, the first thing you should do is to actually let the bot introduce himself or, or itself to the to the end users so they will know who is that what am i going to do with that bot how can the bot actually help me or assist me or whatever um, to actually get that first conversation flow and that first hurdle um, covered so the users will know okay this is a in our case a, a help bot who will be assisting us in different questions um, or in the other case, as with, with Hans Brenders bot, this is a bot specifically, specifically designed to answer the most common OneDrive questions. And this is actually the first thing users should see when they, when they start communicating with your bot. Yep. The other thing, to, um, though, to is... To add one thing, Stefan, on, on your uh, mentioning of, of Hans uh, OneDrive bot, um, for this bot, actually, we, we took the approach to even create two different knowledge bases to make sure that if you know Hans as a German speaking person, that the bot answers the way that Hans speaks. So it's not like we start with an English knowledge base and then use a machine translation back to German, which for a native uh, German speaking person would be a little bit awkward. What I guess for was true for every machine translated language still. But if you know Hans and if you ever talk to him or listen to a, a session of him, he has a specific uh, style and we want to make sure that this bot also reflects his personality. So we are, we are going to make an extra effort to make sure that the bot um, touches the user in a way that uh, in, this, in this case Hans would do with his sessions. Yeah. And this is also one part of, of that personality aspect. The other one is also keep in mind or at least think about all those kind of chit chat and small talk topics because those are the things users will try out. They will ask the bot, how are you? Who made you? Uh, what are you doing today in the afternoon and stuff like that? So you need to be prepared. Um, and what the conversational AI platform actually offers with the Q&A maker service is a set of predefined chit chat questions and answers you could use. Uh, where you have the uh, possibility to choose from different personality types. So either if it's a friendly bot or if it's a, let's say, business casual bot, um, those type of questions will be handled differently. Um, and the cool thing here is that you don't need to come up with all those questions and especially answers uh, by yourself. You could just make use of what is already there. Um, but if you're building a bot, and especially if it's the first time, be prepared for those kind of small talk and let's say silly or, or stupid questions because those are the, those are the things users might ask the bot at the second uh, at the second message already. All right. Next, Next one, uh, architecture, architecture, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, from the architecture perspective, if you are new on that kind of field bot development and the conversational ai platform um, it's a quite a large range which you need to actually think about because a bot in in the microsoft ecosystem consists of many different pieces and components you meet you need to use to make it actually useful so um, what microsoft did is they have come up with let's say uh, a kind of concept or solution accelerator they call the virtual assistant which should show you how enterprise ready bots should be uh, should be uh, architected and should be developed so at the core you have the assistant your brand your personality as we have talked on earlier uh, and that kind of assistant integrates different kinds of cognitive services so those are the services used to add intelligence to your bot. May that be uh, speech capabilities, may that be Q&A or, or language understanding or even vision capabilities like a computer vision to detect certain objects within an image or whatsoever. Those are like the core of your virtual assistant or your chatbot in the end. Um, and by using the, the Microsoft Bot Framework and the Azure Bot Service, 
you get the possibility to use that specific bot you built on various channels like Microsoft Teams, which we'll see later on. But you can use the same kind of chatbot for instance in Facebook Messenger as well and for Slack. So what Microsoft actually offers you is a bot hosting platform um, where you can deploy your bot to and Microsoft will do the, the, the fiddling around on how to connect your bot to the various channels. So you don't need to care about that. The other thing you need to uh, take into consideration is which types of user input and output um, you want to make use of. So for instance, in a classical way, you would just use text only bots. But nowadays, people are used to not only communicate via text only, they're used to communicate with images, they like to click buttons here and there, and especially on mobile uh, use cases, it's comfortable to just click a button, then to insert a whole message. Um, and this will also bring your conversation uh, flow um, more fluently in a way uh, if you're using adaptive cards, for instance, where you can uh, aggregate text, images, buttons, and whatsoever within a single message. And the other thing is think outside your boundaries. Not only focus on desktop PCs and laptops and mobile devices, also think about all the other devices you can target. target like smartwatches for for instance or uh, microsoft uh, announced at the microsoft build conference the amazon alexa channel for the azure bot service so you can deploy your bot to amazon alexa you can deploy your bot to google assistant so basically you can make use of every smart device out there to deploy your bot to and the other side is uh, bot certainly needs to have some kind of knowledge so you will certainly have some knowledge sources you want to integrate um, could be a Q&A maker knowledge base, could be a uh, SAP system and a CRM system, a ERP system, your SQL databases where the knowledge and the information is actually stored and the bot will just grab that knowledge. And if you want to uh, think about how to extend your bot use case, make use of those uh, of that kind of skilling concept, we actually can develop and provide skills for different purposes. Um, but nowadays, if you're starting to uh, with the bot framework and bot development, it's a pretty good um, thing to, to check out um, what's called the Microsoft Bot Framework Composer, because with that tool, you don't need to write a single line of code to actually build your bot. So you have a visual interface, you can make use of the drag and drop UI to scaffold uh, your bot to, to sketch out the whole dialogue flows. Um, and this will get you up and running within a couple of minutes. Um, with, a, with a set of predefined templates. And from there, you can work out on your specific bot use case. And I guess, Tommy, we have, an, we have other options as well, like Power Automate yep. and Power Virtual Assistant to actually build your bot with a no-code, low-code approach, if you will. Yep, that's the, the whole idea is that, of course, you can make use of the, the whole uh, bot framework and really ri start writing code. I think, uh, Stefan, correct me, but you can create a bot in C sharp, you can create a bot in TypeScript, you can create a bot in Java, a bunch of other languages are already supported in types of the uh, bot framework. Uh, the bot framework composer G8 at uh, build conference, um, which is a cool tool where you can start uh, with, with dialogues and we we already used the preview the last couple of months and it's it's puts you in a this in a, in a position where you can sketch out the dialogue and show the dialogue immediately to your end users and get a feeling of how the conversational flow is is growing through but on the other hand like stefan mentioned power automate and the power virtual assistant enable also what's generally called citizen developers uh, to create bots, to create a small agent uh, without the need of, of hardcore development. Yeah. Okay, um, in terms of, of intelligence, Stefan, uh, when we talk about cognitive services, uh, what, yeah. what, what services do you think are, are the ones that listeners and, and viewers of this session should, should pay attention most? So certainly for the bot space, you need to make use uh, of the language category. So language understanding to actually um, give your bot the capability of understanding what the input of that user is um, to derive the meaning from that. Next up would be also if you think about um, implementing multilingual bots, 
uh, to use the text translator API where you can on the fly translate text uh, in into all, almost, I guess it's now 70 supported languages. Um, and that works really, really well in that case. The other thing is if you want to um, derive, let's say, the sentiment from specific input messages or, or, or get the key phrases of specific input messages, you should uh, take a look at the text analytics API um, because that's a really powerful and easy to use API to do that kind of operations. And if you want to integrate uh, some sort of uh, knowledge management solution or let's say Q&A solution into your bot, you should definitely check out the Q&A maker um, because that's a tool where you can build um, cloud hosted knowledge bases um, with, with ease. Um, you can even go ahead, create a knowledge base, um, upload files in there with existing uh, information like words or PDFs or Excel files, or you can grab um, publicly available URLs in a kind of FAQ format and the service will extract that knowledge for you and you will have that um, paste it into your knowledge base within a couple of seconds and then from there on you can use it from your bot um, with with no no time mm -hmm. so you you mean that um, for a bot uh, the the language category in this in this nice infographic is the the vital one because every bot uh, somehow needs to interact and needs uh, yeah. Lewis the language understanding system to interact but of course um, if you if your bot use case uh, has something to do or needs the services provided by the vision or search category please use them but what we want to make sure is that the highlight or the the vital parts is the the language understanding today and uh stefan and i we i think we agree on that um in the future we will also focus on everything that the speech category uh, offers us because um, we already see a, a slight trend there that uh, bespoken bots are are more and more a thing um the services are fast enough and there's uh the, the latency is small enough that you can already think about active translating language that is delivered by by voice uh, and make sense of that so this may be the, the next big thing in terms of a bespoken bot talk to it yeah. i think you have a an example where uh microsoft is working with a big car vendor to make their entertainment and uh communication system in the car based on the bot framework so everything you do with uh, speech recognition is in a car uh, already architectured out of based on the bot framework so you can think of all those scenarios also for example a bot listening to this call and acting on different keywords making tasks making notes making screenshots of what we see here and setting up an email all those things uh, will be available in the near future yeah it's okay. just a matter of the used language i guess because yep. if we speak styrian it won't understand yeah, us. Yeah, our, our way of German is as always special as Austrians. That's yeah. true. Um, monitoring. So monitoring. Um, yep. Yeah. What do we doing have here at, at this at this category? Uh, yeah. Well, basically, you have different uh, angles on how to tackle the monitoring aspect. So, if you, for instance, have provided a Q and A maker bot, uh, it's certainly a good idea to measure your Q and A performance to get an idea on which types of questions have not been answered by the bot um, to actually have that kind of uh, continuously improvement process within your Q&A maker knowledge base in place. Um, and the second thing is also what you can do with, with the recent updates, um, most recent updates from the bot framework SDK to also monitor your user's behavior within the dialogues. So you can track down um, how many users have used certain dialogues, how many times uh, or how much time they have spent within given dialogues, and therefore find out which type of dialogues may lack um, some, some kind of performance where you need to fine tune something. Um, and you get, a, get an idea of how the whole bot performance from a, from a conversational aspect is, is basically um, going on. Okay, um, Stefan. In the in the sake of time, because my stopwatch says we have eight minutes left, um, I just want to make sure that guys check out uh, 
the link that we post by Albert Jan Schott here, uh, Chatbot Insights Missing Answers, where he shows how yeah. you get a feedback on uh, Q&A answers that are maybe uh, answers that are not uh, already uh, in your knowledge base. But we want to make sure that we also see something. So let's jump into the next thing, uh, the demo in Teams, where you can see how a bot uh, is part of the Microsoft Teams user interface. Yeah. So what we have here is basically a rather simple bot. Um, and if I would now enter the bots conversation for the first time, or if I would install the Teams application for the first time, um, the bot would proactively greet me. Um, and there we also see um, what we have uh, discussed earlier with that kind of personality aspect. So the bot actually introduces itself um, with a name, with a kind of um, image in there and also with, with some text stating what the bot will, will do for me as a user. Um, and the cool thing here is um, there's also a help button offered to me. So if I'm, an, if I'm a user who has never used that bot before, I can just go ahead and click the help button. Um, and therefore the bot will then um, in more detail explain what, what it can do for me. So for instance, um, it's designed to answer my um, most common questions and the bot can also help me with my daily task management. And within that help card, we also have a sample question in there stating how can I create a task? So if I'm not sure how to create a task with that bot, I just click the button and it will give me a, a brief explanation on how to do that aligned with an image. So I can actually um, do that uh, on my own again. Um, but before we are going to do that, um, I want to stay within that personality or chit chat um, range, if you will. So if I go ahead and ask now the bot, because it's apparently a bot uh, designed by Diego Maradona, if the bot actually regrets scoring a goal with, with its hand, um, he says no. If he could apologize and go back and change history, he would do. But the goal is still a goal. So the aspect should be aligned with how your for instance, company will will, uh, will want to make sure to be represented either to its uh, employees or to customers or partners or whatever. Um, and that should be aligned with the overall um, brand your company has. Um, but for instance, let's say because Build Conference has, uh, has been in place a couple of days, um, I want to learn more about the Microsoft Bot Framework. So I insert a question, what is the Bot Framework? Uh, and the, the, the bot will then reach out to my knowledge base or to its knowledge base and answer, uh, give me an answer. What is the Microsoft bot framework um, with a couple of links in there and so on. Um, and as I'm quite new to that topic, I want to learn more about that. Um, but I want to, uh, I actually want to have that kind of reminding or, or task mechanism in there. So I don't forget to learn more about the Microsoft bot framework. So what I do is. I click on the ellipsis of that specific answer the bot gave me, go ahead to more actions. And here we have what's called a Teams messaging extension. Uh, and if I click that, I will be represented with a, um, with a new pop out uh, dialog where I can fulfill my task management. So I can create a task right directly from my conversation. So I can select either a to do task for my personal to do or if I want to make that uh, task available in Planner, I can do so as well. So I'm gonna give it a title, learn more about the MBF. Start date is of course today, and I want to know everything until Saturday. And I go ahead and click create to do task. And what the bot actually will do for me right now is to call the Microsoft Graph, create the, the, the task, and then send back a message I've created your task. Here's the link to the task. If you want to open it up, go ahead. Um, but that's yeah. In terms of in terms of architecture, I think it's it's important that um, we make that, that, that very clear that this model dialog that popped up out after Stefan clicked on uh, create task actually you defined this already in the bot. So. Um, I think you're using uh, adaptive cards in yeah. there uh, to get the input back. Uh, but this dialogue is the, the, the part, this component is in your bot. So uh, it can be a, a simple thing that you say, okay, uh, I want to have this um, 
as a, a code fragment in my bot. I want to have this as a very simple uh, input message that's just configured in how you define your Teams application, or you can make a, a redirect to your own web application, but you can also do this just with the bot code and get so, um, put you in the position that you get data back from your users and then you act on like Stefan does here uh, by creating a, a task in to do or planner whatever you, yeah. you clicked on and the second aspect because right now we are in a one-on-one -on -one chat with the bot i can do exactly the same from within a team's conversation so if someone posts a message in a channel i can go ahead more actions create task and now what i can do even is create a task in that in that set teams planner so if i go ahead and paste in something about learn more about bf um, and I'm in my planner view, I select the community events plan, which is attached to that specific team. And if I now go ahead and create the planner task, it will do exactly the same. And it will proactively in a one-on-one -on -one chat, send me a message. Hey, I've created your task. So we're actually sw switching the context here between the team's conversation and the one-on-one -on -one conversation. It will proactively notify me and I can go ahead and open the task in planner and do the rest in planner then. So I have like this, co this constant context switching um, kind of decreased because I'm in my conversation, I've created my task and if I want to act or work on that task, I then go directly to planner. Good. Perfect. And one more thing to add. Uh... The touch points in Teams, uh, the whole demo is also in there. Uh in slides. So there will be pictures available um, also in, in, in the wrap up. Um, let's wrap it up. We have one minute left. Um, let's move on to the summary. Um, we, we talked you through uh, 30 minutes, our five uh, yeah, must knows for creating intelligent bot in Teams. Uh, start with a, a good uh, approved use case that you really think is, is way more than just trying out technology. Think of the personality of your bot, how people will feel the interaction with the different uh, bots that you create. Um, make sure, for example, if you are a, a large corporation, a bank, or uh, so to speak, uh, to make sure that the, the bot answers the questions in the way that you want. Um, think of the overall architecture, uh, align it to your uh, workplace strategy or to other uh, components in your IT strategy, of course. Um, monitoring as a, a, a vital point to get better and to get feedback from the end users to make sure that your knowledge base knows more and is updated in a regular base and you just get feedback from your users. And then think of all the different touch points in Teams you have message extensions, you have uh, message actions. So m more things than just one-on-one -on -one chat conversations or channel conversations. Okay, I think we have some yeah. reference slides also there. So you can check out um, a walkthrough about Teams messaging. We updated the slide deck to include the latest and greatest from, from Build Conference around conversational AI and what's new in Teams. Um, you can also start now with uh, with some simple templates to create teams and i think uh we hit exactly yeah. 30 minutes Thanks. thank you very much and if you have some questions just shoot them at us bye thank bye. you
Thank you for being a part of the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Join the community and meet in person world-class Microsoft and MVP speakers this autumn in Wiesbaden, Frankfurt, Germany, with 15 full-day tutorials and over 150 Microsoft 365 and Azure sessions at the combined European Collaboration Summit and European Cloud Summit from 26 to 28 October 2020. Community rocks!